It's important to remember that recovery from an eating disorder is a process. And anytime there's a process, you're going to have some good days and you're going to have some slips and some bad days. And I think the most important thing to remember is that if you're willing to look at what happened on those bad days, you might learn and help prevent that from happening again. Let me tell you about a tool called the behavior chain analysis. This is a tool in cognitive behavioral therapy that we use to help you learn and understand why you do what you do. It helps you to look back and see when did these chain of events start happening that leads you to that problem behavior. Typically, these chain of events start with a trigger. Now, a trigger is something that's external, something that you can't control, something somebody said, something that happened that was out of your control. But typically what happens is that trigger or prompting event sparks a chain of events that, when left unchecked, will lead to your eating disorder behavior. The important part of this chain is to help empower you. So when I ask you, well, why do you do what you do? You don't say, I don't know, it's just habit. But what you could do if you use this tool and you've been, you've been taught how to use it, you could say, well, let me tell you, I was very vulnerable yesterday. And the reason I was is I didn't get very much sleep. And I drank too much caffeine, which made me anxious. And then I got a call from my boyfriend. He really upset me because it evoked in me a feeling of shame and unworthiness. Then I thought to myself, I'm no good. What am I doing? I'm never going to be able to recover. Then I isolated. Then I felt even worse. And I started eating a little bit, taking my snack early instead of waiting to the time when I normally have my snack. Then I told myself, I'm a loser. I can't believe I did this. I'm feeling shame. I'm feeling anger at myself. I get more angry at myself. So then I go and just eat everything I know in the refrigerator. That was my problem behavior. See, if I look back, I realize that I could have prevented being so vulnerable by taking better care of myself. And I could have reacted differently to the call from my boyfriend. It's a real empowering tool for you to understand that. Because then you can go back and stop a thought or change a feeling or do something different all the way through this chain of events and stop it before it leads to the binge in the refrigerator. The other really important part of understanding behavior chain analysis has to do with understanding the reinforcers that occur after you actually go through with that behavior. This is something like a pros and cons list. The pros of following through with that behavior are the pros of stopping that behavior. The cons of continuing this behavior are the cons of stopping this behavior. Now this seems a little complicated, but what it can help you do is isolate what motivates you to continue with that behavior. Because you may be insightful and know everything there is to why you do what you do in terms of what prompted the behavior, what vulnerability you had, your thoughts, feelings, and actions. But if you're getting too much out of that behavior, meaning it's meeting the very needs that you need to be met, then you may be caught in that vicious cycle. So once you can understand what needs being met by that behavior, then you can create, with the help of others, to figure out how you can get that need met in a different way than the ineffective behavior that you're using. This is a very insightful tool, but also is very good for relapse prevention. Putting together a plan so that the next time you're triggered by your boyfriend calling, that you might not have to go all the way to binging out of the refrigerator.